y'all, Scott here. I'm legally obligated to state the following. Three hoes and a Merry Jesus birthday is on December 25th. Christmas is almost here! The time of year all about facial hair and obesity and whatever the hell a Yuletide is. But most importantly, it's about the joy of getting a Red Dead Redemption 2 Collector's Edition that includes everything except Red Dead Redemption 2. Great! I love Red Dead 2 merchandise, but I just refuse to own the game. Listen, I need a right quick way to prove to everybody that I have copious amounts of money and I hate sex. It's a Christmas miracle! With the announcement of almost every big AAA release these days, word of an expensive collector's edition of the title is sure to follow. Ah, the collector. Hey! A seeming pile of virginity who cares deeply about how his Yonoid cartridge looks. Almost every pop culture medium has collectors, but I'd argue video games are a special case. They're inherently collectible. Many titles can only be played on specific hardware, sometimes with specific accessories. Couple that with the fact that video game preservation simply hasn't been taken as seriously as other artistic mediums when it deserves and needs to be, and hopefully you can see why I, alongside many others, find collecting video games to be a fulfilling hobby. And it's pretty obvious, video game publishers know this, and thus offer limited versions of their games, coming with all sorts of this. I think the first collector's edition most people remember was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Times, which was a value-soaked box. It came with a gold cartridge. You don't see that every day. Ever since that release, collector's editions, limited editions, special editions, whatever you want to call them, have gotten increasingly popular for publishers to offer. It can be fairly pricey in comparison to the standard releases, so when one is announced, it's fair to ask, alright tough guy, why should I buy this? Well luckily, I got an early Christmas present in the form of a bunch of irrelevant collector's editions, so let's take a look at them all and see what it takes to be a good collector's edition. Alright, what do we have here? <laughs> Aliens Colonial Marines. Yeah, this game turned out to be a little too f***ing terrible for most people's liking, but we don't care about that. How does this collector's edition stack up? I like the packaging, and this box set comes with some sheets of paper. Paper with words, paper with pictures, even paper with, here you go, some expired DLC codes. Collector's editions that come with DLC just seems like a cheat. Like, come on, that's not collectible, give me something physical. These documents are kinda cool. Aliens fans are sure to get a kick out of them, and by that I mean they'll look at them, smirk, and then never look at them again. We get some patches included as well, but the star of the show is the premium NPVC collectible. That's premium with a capital um. I mean, overall, this collector's edition isn't too bad. It feels like more thought and care was put into this than the actual game. But it originally retailed for 100 bucks, and when you look at it that way, for 40 bucks more, you got an okay figure, some patches, paper, and more weapons in the game. Uh... The Mega Man Legacy Collection, a great way to experience the series in my opinion. Released on PS4, Xbox One, and PC in August of 2015, with a 3DS release coming later in February 2016. Alongside physical releases of the PS4 and Xbox One versions, Capcom also released a collector's edition exclusive to the Nintendo 3DS. So we get the game, some postcards, which I really want to know if anybody actually used these things as actual postcards instead of doing the tried and true... That's cool! But of course, the main event is the Amiibo. This box set comes packed in with the Smash Brothers Mega Man figure, now gold flavored. All right, few things about this. One, this comes in a completely blank package. Cool. Two, from what I've read, this Amiibo doesn't have any exclusive features to it in any game. It's just a Mega Man Amiibo. You can unlock certain challenges in Legacy Collection with it, but this works with any Mega Man Amiibo. So unless you're a diehard Amiibo collector or a huge Mega Man fan, this Amiibo is one of the more pointless releases. This was 50 bucks when it released, a solid $20 more than the standard version. Amiibo were all worth $13 back then, so overall the value of this package is 43 bucks, and you're spending $7 more for postcards. I bought this when I was still in a bit of an Amiibo phase, and I already owned Legacy Collection on the PS4. So really, I didn't play the 3DS version all too much, and already owned a standard Mega Man Amiibo. Yeah, safe to say I didn't get a lot of value out of that purchase. Street Fighter Cross Tekken. This comes with 45 gem power, and people still say the economy's in shambles. We get a copy of the game with exclusive cover art that denotes it's the special edition. Well, that's nice. An exclusive prequel story comic book? Well, it's well illustrated, but it's just a part of the instruction manual. Hey, I mean, an upside to this is that it's probably way harder to lose as it's just gonna sit in the game case since it's also a manual, but it also feels like they were cutting some costs. However, it's all about the Street Fighter Cross Tekken Arcade Cabinet Replica Piggy Bank. How's that for a catchphrase? Well, it's a plastic, non-functioning arcade cabinet you can spank some coins into. You have to assemble this yourself and... Childbirth? Kidney stones? Assembling the Street Fighter Cross Tekken Arcade Bank. This thing is dreadful to put together. You have to apply so much pressure to these pieces and it never feels like you're doing it correctly. But in the end, it's all right. 
This is kind of cute. Nowadays, I don't think it's totally out of the question to offer playable mini arcade cabinets in collector's editions, but back in the horrifying year of 2012, this was all they could do. I believe it retailed for $70, so for 10 bucks more than the regular edition, I think this was definitely passable. Life is Strange Limited Edition. This one is simple and straight to the point, and in my opinion, is quite good for the price. A hardcover art book, the game's soundtrack on CD, and a downloadable director's commentary, all in a nice box. I mainly like this one because it includes stuff that actual collectors and big fans would legitimately enjoy and get use out of. They all fit the tone of Life is Strange, plus it was only $10 more than the regular edition. At that point, why not pick up this version? Ooh, Call of Duty World at War, a game based on World War II, how fun! Now this one is pretty lame, just a bunch of multiplayer bonuses are included, but what do you get physically with this box? Well, a box for everything to come in, that's nice, and also a collectible canteen, well I'll be. I can't wait to drink out of this thing and consume water and swallow liquids, F my night's ruined. This canteen doesn't open at all, it's literally just a prop. I feel like it would've cost them less to just buy real canteens that you can actually drink out of. Now I don't have a canteen to drink out of, what am I supposed to do in a life or death situation? Don't worry guys, we'll have plenty of canteens, I stocked up on World of War Collector's Editions. You fool! <laughs> hey, Xenoblade Chronicles X, this is the game with the yellow round guy, right? Yeah, during the Wii U era, I bought a lot of Nintendo published stuff just to support them in their time of need, and that included buying the special edition to a game in a series I am not into. At the very least, this is a really classy, well done release, we have an insane insanely meaty art book, a matted art card, all right, and the game soundtrack on a USB drive. Now this thing feels substantial, it feels quality, and it's f***ing dreadful. It only includes 10 songs from the soundtrack. You'd think since they were putting it on a USB flash drive instead of a CD, it would be easier for them to include the whole thing. On top of that, the flash drive can only hold 800 megabytes worth of content, which makes it next to useless to use as an actual flash drive. And on top of that, there's messy DRM with the soundtrack, meaning you have to keep the flash drive in to listen to the songs. At least it looks cool, a blue light flickers when the drive is inserted and it gives off vibes of the scales in the game. You see, I can Xenoblade a little bit. Saints Row 2, everybody's favorite Grand Theft Auto game until a real Grand Theft Auto game comes out. Look at this nice tin, it's like there's a real back in front of me. We get an art book, which feels like trash. The quality of this paper is in line with kids menus, and plus out of all games I want to see art from, Saints Row 2 is definitely not in the top 10. A money clip, and finally, I have a bullet USB drive. It comes with a bunch of wallpapers and can store a full gigabyte of data. Well, there you go. Saints Row 2 narrowly beat Xenoblade X for Game of the Year. And that's about it. Overall, not the most impressive out there. Holy shit, it comes with a poster. This one ain't too bad. It doesn't include any big cool things, but it includes enough small things to make it interesting. Batman Arkham City. This is one that really gets a lot right. A really high quality statue of Batman alongside an art book, a DVD copy of a movie, a soundtrack, and a mountain of DLC codes. Now you may ask where the game is. Oh come on guys, you got so much right and then you put the game in the art book. That's just inconvenient. Really, collector's editions can be cool. It's just there's a lot of things going against many of them. Sometimes they're anything but collector's editions. They might be overproduced and thus put on clearance. Ending up cheaper than the standard edition because guess what? Nobody wants a toilet sized box with easter eggs in it. This copy of MVC Infinite has been rotting at my best buy since launch. Guys, if no collector has bought this thing by now, nobody is ever gonna buy it. You know what stings? When there's like a billion different editions of a game. Ubisoft does a lot of this where there's the standard edition, deluxe edition, gold edition, gold digital edition, ultimate digital edition, the Spartan edition, and the Pantheon edition. Who's like, man, I want this $160 one, but I don't know about that $220 one. And when certain content is only in certain editions and there's not one version you can buy that gives you all the content, that's just dumb. Also, I hate it when collector's editions come with box art that's just straight up worse than the standard edition. Smash Brothers Ultimate, the special edition comes with a slick pro controller and a steelbook. That's awesome, but it doesn't come with the standard case for the game, and let's be honest, this steelbook does not compare to this artwork. Weirdly enough, Nintendo of all companies doesn't do a ton of limited editions. They do them every now and then, like with Breath of the Wild. We got a special edition and a master edition. For a hundred bucks, you got a switch carrying case, a map, a CD, and a coin. And for an extra 30 with the master edition, you got a statue of the master sword. I personally didn't see much value in either one, so I passed. But that's the thing about collector's editions. Most items included in them aren't inherently valuable or rare most of the time. They're just supposed to be little things that collectors and diehard fans would find cool. So yeah, while many of them are kind of waste of money, and you're probably going to look at the things included maybe twice and ever again, it's all about whether you see value in the purchase.
And damn it, I wanted the keychain with Puyo Puyo Tetris. Collector's editions can be lamer than lame sometimes, but hey, if you personally see some value in one, go for it. It's not like some of them are the only versions released of certain games. Falsely advertise their contents, include items that you're never going to use, take up 500 square feet of your house, are ludicrously overpriced, are one of 15 different versions, none of which come with all the content, or just call collector's edition on the box for no reason. Yeah, that would be ridiculous! <laughs>